Yes. Um, but what I need to restart is not my, it's not OBS, it's the, ah, there it goes. Streaming just, server's getting grumpy now. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, I'm, I'm, we're good. We're good. Joey, you're good to go. Fantastic. Okay. Will there so, be another um, call on another channel for me? No, you're here. You'll be here. No, this All is right. the one you're this on. This is the live call. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, everybody I'm has missing. to mute because we're going to yeah. need to start. It's out there. I'm missing that. Yes. Go yeah. ahead. I'm on standby until she introduces sure. me. Sure. Yep. Everybody mute, and then um, I'll uh, let you know in a, in a couple seconds, and then Michelle, you can start off. So we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 3 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. session of the 2017 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC or use the hashtag, hashtag OSCC17. This session, I am happy to introduce a terrific uh, topic of easy to use open sim, dream world and dream grid stats, use and the future. And our speaker today, this cute little thing sitting next to me, <laughs> is Fred Buckhausen. And Fred is the president of Microtechnology Services, Inc. His primary work is in microcomputer and microprocessor hardware design and programming. His software work is primarily in JavaScript and Perl with C and C++, um, LSL script, VB and VBA, 3D modeling in SolidWorks, and lots of other languages and tools that he has been using since 1970s so he can talk about scripting i want to welcome fred and i will pass the mic to you well thank you very much um as you know i've had uh, dream world out for about a year now and today i'm going to be introducing also a new dream grid which is an extension to it a logical extension i'm also going to talk about some of the lessons that i've learned and some of the statistics about how OpenSim works in these various home servers the um let me get to the next slide here if i can so what is dream world well it's a lot easier way of setting up a, a grid much like sim on a stick or Diva Distro. It brings along a database. It brings along uh, trusted code. It has a uh, lot of things it does for you automatically, like uh, has a built-in dynamic DNS server. It has uh, HyperGrid enabled, hopefully, right off the bat. Uh, most importantly, it's a diagnostic system and an INI file editor. Once it has run once, you don't even need to run DreamWorld again. It's possible to just run MySQL with one click. It'll make a batch file for you. And you can also run OpenSim with a second click. Uh, but that can break. See, your monitor, I mean, your uh, router might change your IP address. Your PC IP address may change on the LAN. You may go wireless. You go, may go hardwired. There's all kinds of issues with trying to keep an OpenSim grid up in a home environment, particularly on something like a laptop with four gigs of RAM. So when you take start off with DreamWorld, it only takes one click to start it, and your, your start button will automatically run MySQL, register a dynamic DNS name to your public IP. It'll open up and port forward any of the needed ports in case any of the IP addresses have changed. And then before it runs OpenSim, it'll edit every one of the INI files to match what your settings are, and then runs OpenSim. So it should just install and start and run. Eh, in an ideal world. Um, reality is, is there's some router problems out there and the way OpenSim is coded that can complicate things. So basically you can get in with three clicks. Once to start it, once to click the start button to bring everything, and one more. If you've already got your viewer set for like remember my password, uh, you can just click that one more time and you'll be in world. And that'll be on the hypergrid and everything. The goal is to reduce it to actually one click or even zero click. So you just turn your PC on and it comes up and running. So it's also got um, a lot of other little features built into it, like universal plug and play. So it's a bit like Sim on a Stick, mashed with the Diva Distro by Diva Canto, as you know, Dr. Crystal Lopez. I think she's still here in the audience. She was on stage a minute ago. 
Um, we all owe a massive debt to her, particularly me, because I literally have built around her work, and I'm using the Diva Distro in the Dream World. Um, Diva, the new Dream Grid is going to be used in more closer to core. Um, she's also done a lot of work on the Onlook Viewer, which I included in the Dream World. I've used it a lot in my own professional work because it has a greatly simplified user interface. You can also completely get rid of the avatar, which is quite a bit of a distraction in certain presentations. I've used it at trade shows. I've also used it to pitch to my employees for things about where our surface mount machine's going to go, where our wave solder machine should be oriented, so they could walk around and visualize things. And it helps to either suppress the avatars in some situation, other cases, just get rid of all those extra buttons you won't need when you're in a, not a hypergrid mode. So the next version is uh, going to be version 2.0. The uh, hypergrid is 1.80821 and 0900 switchable in the dream world. Dream grid is core, which is 0900. Now the uh, system is uh, got a couple of other nice features. Basically, you can do uh, web-based OR and IARs as well as drag and drop them onto the screen. Currently, there are 81 ORs and 66 IARs that are known open source that have licenses, all open source licenses, which are available. About 50-something of them are available from the web link menu, and another 50-plus are available. I think it's 56 are actually available at the moment in the pull-down. You just click on Load New Island, and zip, there you are. And so thank you to all the people who have contributed your content. I love the ores that people have been giving us. Uh, Isis Ophelia has given me several that have inspired me to do great things. So please keep bringing them on. I've also purchased a lot of ore content, had it custom made, several thousands of dollars worth, and given it away for you to, for exclusively for use in the dream world. So if you want to hang around and make your own Star Trek movie, you can. It's been a lot of fun now playing with all this stuff. It's amazing what this community can do. Speaking of community, it's also a very good uh, group of community of people like uh, Isis Ophelia, who's been a great deal of help for me in the Open Simulator Dream World. You should join that group if you're interested in the Dream community at all. We have hundreds of people there who can help you with bugs. Uh, bug fixes, advice, because the dream world is not only just a dream world, it's also all of OpenSim. Um, it literally runs unmodified OpenSim. And as you know, there are hundreds of questions about just OpenSim. Less, also, there is a great deal of, you know, configuration issues you've got to deal with because there's so many different routers and such like that in the system. So let me give you a couple of quick stats here. Um, I run Hyperica. I purchased it from Maria. And I continue to run it and try and keep track of every grid in the world. Uh, we keep all the stats there at hyperica.com. I also keep a set of stats for uh, Dreamworld specifically at outworlds.com slash hyperica. And it keeps track. There's a little hidden uh, anonymous stat feature in Dreamworld. Basically, whenever you start it, a diagnostic runs the very first time Dreamworld starts. and needs to probe your setup very much like canyouseeme.org or is my port open? It just bounces a little bit of traffic off of my server, uh, adds a random number to it at the install, and then it pings your machine to see if it's live. If it is live, it will tell you that the loopback test and the open ports test have passed. So I anonymously keep track of that magic number. I don't really know who you are. All I know is that your diagnostics have passed or failed and the various reasons why. So we've had a, a few of those um, fail. I'll go over those in a moment. But also, it keeps track of the number of times we've had an install. It's a little almost close to 6,000 unique UIDs have been generated by this system in the last year. Uh, currently, there's about 103 uh, grids online. Out of the total of 300 and something odd four, it's about one-third of the world. The – sorry about my voice if it's having issues. I hope it's working fine. Somebody keep yelling in chat at me if it's not. So anyway – Dreamworld typically represents about 20% of all known grid space. Um, there's about 23,500 second life regions, according to the a SimStat service online. So we're roughly, if you add up all of what we've got, we're over 100,000 sims or over, over four times the size of second life in regions. And that's not counting in-worlds, the Great Canadian Grid, the Adult Grid, or the 170,000 downloads of of the sim on a stick 
Now, last year, there were about 90,000 downloads of a SIM on a stick, um, which can be hacked into a hypergrid that's basically straight diva distro, and it's the inspiration for this. Um, however, I was look checking on this, and I'm a little suspicious of that stat because it has no rel equals no follow. So a lot of robots and web crawlers may have upped that number as well. So there's uh, a lot of people using the system. Um, this stat right here is only from the last few months. It's uh, around 16% uh, of people were able to make it work right off the bat. That's a very shockingly low number, and I've been trying to figure out why. Most people are able to figure out how to open their ports. However, my UPnP doesn't work too well. The loopback is seems to be the big issue. I can tell you one thing. Leaksys is about the only major brand out there that seems to work reliably. Um, now, if you have a router that you have messed with, please go to the opensimulator.org wiki. If you don't have an account, sign up. It's free and edit it. Just like Wikipedia, anybody can edit it. There is a page there called wiki slash nat loopback routers where we try and maintain the list of all the routers in the world. Uh, you can go to that page right now and see if Apple routers work with it. They should work fine. Some of them do. Some of them don't. I know that Verizon and Fios take special uh, tricks. I had to go to a lot of trouble with this, and I've remoted into dozens of desktops, so I have some, some better ideas. About 54% of the people out there, UPnP does not work on. No matter how much code and time I've spent on this, I cannot get them to work reliably. About half, roughly, work right out of the back, the, the, the box. Um, and I need to fix that, and I need some people's help. So, for example, uh, my implementation may be broken. I've included a separate C-sharp UPnP manually driven program to let you look into your system. Uh, some people reported the issues with that. Other people, it's worked just fine. So my big problem is, is everything works for me, so I get the works on my machine or Yay. Uh, unfortunately, that means I can't fix it because it's not broke. And so if there are any volunteers out there who could give me an hour or so on their machine that they know loopback doesn't work and they know their router and they actually have a password to it, which is another big problem. Uh, I would love to remote in your machine for an hour or so. I will need to install Visual Studio, Git, and DreamWorld on it and spend an hour or two maybe, I'm not sure, maybe two or three hours. And I would that, hopefully I can fix it for everybody if that occurs. So if there's any volunteers, please meet me after the show. Oh, hang on, too far. Let me back up a grid. So what do you need to run this program? Well, you need a laptop, frankly. I've seen people run four or five sims on a four-gig Gigabyte, basically, I guess you could call it a crap top, and it works just fine. Uh, don't put eight sims on it that have gigs and gigs and gigs of data. You're going to swap to disk, and it's going to quit. So this is my machine. Uh, it's a simple Dell server. I decided to get me a powerful machine, and so I plucked this one up for 300 bucks and threw it in the garage because it's noisy. Uh, I'd have a monitor and a keyboard and some speakers on it, not that you need that. I always remote desktop into it. I call it uh, overhang because it kind of overhangs the shelf. And um, it's a dual Xeon with 16 cores, open sim loves cores. It came with 48 gigs of RAM for 300 bucks. And then I threw a small SSID in, SSI, SSD into it, a solid state disk, and it works. Then I had to go in and dork with my routers. Um, there you go, three regions and host 27 visitors on eight gigs of RAM. Now, eight gigs of RAM is about a minimum. So here is my setup. I won't get into this a lot. It's uh, pretty straightforward, but I have to hook up an extra router in a weird path or I'm going to lose my TV guide and other stuff. And it's a non-supported config. So in this picture back here, uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see two routers on the shelf. And down below it is this big, tall gray cylinder where I keep frozen heads, you know, like for making Disney models out of. Uh, but basically all you need is any old box will do in a storm. Of course, the more cores and the more RAM, the merrier. It doesn't even need a graphics card. You can just remote in. Um, these are relatively cheap, too. You can buy used servers in lots of different places. So why is it that people have troubles getting on? I can tell you right now it's generally loopback. Uh, loopback, I've seen all kinds of issues. Um, for example, some routers have very small UDP buffers, 1K. So the teleports, uploads are very unreliable. That's a particular of Action Tech routers on Fios, Verizon style networks. Um, I've run into a router that loops back TCP but did not loop back UDP. I've wanted to run that 
well, the normal loopback path is inside the firewall of the router. In other words, it loops the traffic to the router and back to you. So even if you close all the ports in your router, loopback should still work. I've seen routers that loop back outside the firewall and then get blocked because OpenSIM recommends you block port 8003. And OpenSIM also recommends that X-Bakes and profiles and groups go to port 8003 in the public port. So that's wrong. I've had to fix that too. So there's lots and lots of little things that surprise me, even though I've been doing network engineering for many, many, many years. Oh, God, all kinds of problems occurred. Let me quote one user. He said um, he has an Xfinity router that has eight port forwards. It sets more of them up, but then sometime later it deletes them using FIFO, though 8001, 2, and 4 were the first to go. It accepted range, but then the whole lookup table in the modem became corrupted. It turns out after such a corruption, it flings out all sorts of settings, including some long deleted, literally random settings after re reboot. To say it is a heap of steaming dragon voodoo would be a compliment. So needless to say, that guy has serious issues with his Xfinity Comcast router. I have not personally run into that one, but I believe every word of it. I remoted into Turkey and ran across routers that you could only set up by talking to tech support. They won't give you access to the router, so there's no password. That's a big problem. If you haven't got a password to router, you're probably not going to get on OpenSIM. So loopback is the problem. Um, I've been able to fix it by using a Windows driver. And let me stress this right here. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever that a Windows PC cannot get on the hypergrid at any home or IP address. The only reason it will not is because you don't have a password to your router and can't port forward or UPnP is not working or my code isn't setting it up right. Or you're running a firewall or you're running a antivirus program or three or you have a virus. I've run into that. Um, you have no password to the router. If you can just solve the problem of opening a few ports and installing a simple loopback driver, or editing the et cetera um, file, uh, et cetera, host file, you can make this thing work. But it's not something that the average person will do. So that's the current status of DreamWorld. There are probably around 800 of them out there that are installed and running. Out of about 5,000 various installs, there is at least uh, 88 or so online at the moment. They tend to go up and go down as the day goes by, and we represent about 25 to 33 percent of all the known grids, including the big ones. And I think that's a big accomplishment because it really makes the world a lot bigger very quickly. But as you know, it's a needs. It, there's a few things wrong with it. We want to have a a uh, much faster arrangement with robust-based, must be expandable. We need to be able to start and stop regions at any time. Here you can see you can just click these red and green icons on the right and start a region at any time with the Dream Grid. Now, the Dream Grid architecture has changed too. There's only one copy, okay? All you need is one folder. It comes with the source code and you recompile it. I've seen people who have 50 open sims up and running copies and upgrading is a might uh, upgrading is just simply a nightmare so what i've done is i'm used some of the features that the devs have built in and made us a a, a single install so you can create regions easily like before you can go to an expert setup has a few minor changes and it has a globits memory module but you're going to have to simply upgrade it you cannot you'll just have to install it without an upgrade and so it's in the early beta stage. This is the URL. It's outworlds.com slash download. And I'll wrap up here because I'm going to be over here in OSCC Expo Zone number three in booth number 23. If you step off the stage and head down to the right, I'll be in that first booth there next to the core devs in the middle. And we'll be uh, available for any questions if you had. Again, you can download it now, but remember, it's early beta. So expect some bugs. Woohoo! Fred, thank you so much. I You're can't welcome. wait to start dreaming in your world. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, we do have to move on. I'm sorry, everyone. I know we were hoping for question time. Let me take one question real quick. Does anybody have a question? I don't want to not take a question if someone has a question. All right. I scared everybody when I wrapped. All right. Well, as a reminder to our audience, um, you can see what's coming up in the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And uh, following this session, the next session will begin at 3.30. 
and it is entitled Reevaluating Our Understanding of Content Creation in 3D Virtual Spaces. So it should be very interesting. Um, so we will see you then. Uh, you've got about 10 minutes or so to jump around, see anything, and don't forget you can visit uh, Fred. All right. Talk to you soon. <laughs>